The Mun is the first extraterrestrial body that most players land on in Kerbal Space Program, and for good reason. It's the only thing besides the sun clearly visible in the sky, the low gravity makes landing relatively easy, and even its position relative to the Kerbal Space Center means if you load a game and launch a rocket, you're guaranteed an easy encounter. The issue I've been having though is it just takes too long to get there. I don't have multiple days to wait traveling between the two bodies. Now my goal is to see how fast I could take off from Kerbin, touch the moon, and safely land back. Now, of course, starting out the vehicle assembly building here, I wanted to start out with a simple rocket. Now, to control this thing, I put down a command seat instead of a command pod. This should save me a little bit of weight, and you can see on the bottom of that, I put down this massive engine. And trying this out, it was really good right up until they ran out of fuel, but besides that, it was going really well. Now, of course, I I'm gonna need a little bit more to get to the moon here, so I decided to take off that fuel tank and you can see I'm using this slightly larger one. Now this seemed like a great idea and go off the launch pad here, it was looking great. Right up until it wasn't looking great, but before that we were doing great. Now at first I thought the problem was that I needed a bit more stability here, so I added on some small fins to the bottom and I was hoping that was going to stabilize me. This actually did seem to work for a little bit, but you'll notice eventually I do end up flipping over again. Now at the time, I didn't really understand why this was happening, I thought maybe it was some weird weight distribution thing, but under a little more consideration, I realized that since I'm using a command seat instead of that command pod, it ends up rotating me by 90 degrees down, and you can see, even with better fins, I really can't stay going straight. Now, I didn't know this at the time, though, so I figured that more power, I mean, you really just can't go wrong with that, so we're using four engines now, and you can see, we're also using eight of these Clydesdale boosters. Now, I figured that these two should be able to get me out of the atmosphere, but once I'm actually out of there, I'm gonna need something to push me to the mun, and for that, you can see, I'm using a hydrogen engine, and this hydrogen fuel tank. Now, trying this out with a launch pad, though, we are definitely not immune from that turning problem I had before, and you can see now, immediately we start to go over to the side. This, you know, just isn't really gonna work, so I decided finally get her on a command seat and add on like one more ton to use this command pod. Now trying this out, it seemed to completely solve my problems and now I'm going straight up into the air. This was looking great and you can see now I'm actually starting to do a gravity turn over to the side. I'm not going to be wanting to do this in the future and I'll explain why a little later on in the video, but you can see here I ended up burning out of those Clydesdale boosters and starting to use my second stage. This looked good at first, but I wasn't really accelerating at all, I was kind of wondering what was even going. Going on. Now, under closer inspection here, I think I clipped these boosters too close into each other and they were preventing each other from producing any thrust. Now, of course, that makes the whole stage useless, but I figured I might as well try to salvage things and use my hydrogen engine here. Now, this seemed to be working fine. I don't know, just an engine strapped on a fuel tank. But I went back to the vehicle assembly building here and you can see I stretched out my engines a little bit more. And you can see, trying the exact same thing again, we really started to push forward. Now, unfortunately, the boosters also managed to clip into three of the the four engines here, and that seemed to completely destroy it. Now, I threw on some Separatrons here to push away the boosters a little bit more, and with those on there, I wanted to do one more test. Now, this time, you can see they ended up pushing away from the rocket a bit more, and while something exploded, it didn't seem to be important, and you can see now I actually managed to keep all four engines. Now, for some reason, the rocket was starting to turn as I was burning up. It, it's a well-designed game, but you can see here it actually was producing a little bit of thrust, and and I wanted to see where my trajectory was going to send me. Now, since this was just a test run, I had been burning pretty aimlessly, but you can see here, I actually got a pretty close encounter at the MUN. It looks like I'm going to run right into it, but in actuality, I was going to be a little bit behind it since it is going to move slightly forward as I travel there. Now, we're over there now. I am a little bit behind it, but I was curious to see how much time it was going to take me to actually land on the surface. So back over on my rocket now, you can see I ended up starting to burn retrograde here to see if I was going to be able to collapse down on the MUN. Now, I was actually pretty surprised at just how much fuel I had at this point, and you can see here, pretty easily, I managed to get that collision. Now, unfortunately, this is one of those times where I kind of forget that I'm making a video and probably shouldn't do things when they're super dark, because YouTube is going to absolutely destroy it. But, unfortunately, this is the world we live in, so you can see now I'm starting to burn here and land on the surface. I wasn't sure how well this was going to go, and unfortunately, I misgaged things a 
little bit and ended up slamming into the surface around 30 meters per second. Ultimately though, the only thing that mattered is that I managed to get there in under six hours, so I figured that things were looking pretty good. Now, of course though, six hours is still way too slow. We're gonna need to speed that up a lot here. So I added on more boosters. And every time I say that, it always seems to go badly. And the game seemed to agree with me on that. So I decided, you know what? Let's go for a fresh start here and see if I can improve things. This time, I'm also thinking a little more comprehensively. And you can see what I did here is I used a Xenon tank. I put down an ion engine and I put my seat on that. Now, Xenon is the most energy dense fuel in the game. So if I could use it on my return trip, it would be great. Ion engines have very little thrust. So I was a little concerned about that. But since I figured I was going to have multiple hours to burn, I should be able to get through all the fuel anyway. And realistically, this should just be a really light way to get back. Now, you probably also saw I added on a bunch of solar panels and I'm using a smaller fuel tank because I realized I didn't really need as much fuel as I had. Now, with all this, we kind of get this nice little flower design. And now with a nice clear view into the sun, I started to burn here and overall, it was looking pretty good. My speed was increasing pretty slowly, but again, it didn't really need to go that fast. And I figured I would definitely have enough time to get through all of the fuel. Now this return vessel is pretty exposed right now. So what I wanted to do is add a fairing around it just to protect it. And you can see now we're adding back on the hydrogen. Now I'm putting down those Clydesdale boosters again. Now I put six on this inner ring and you can see after that, I put down another six around that. Now after all that is probably one of the most important parts of the mission. You can see now I'm trying to angle the Kerbal Space Center. So it's right in the front of the sphere of influence of the moon. Now the advantage of doing this is it means I can burn directly up and I should get a nice intersection with the moon immediately. This should be faster than any other path since I don't have to partially orbit in order to get there. Now you can see at the launch pad here, everything is actually going pretty well and I'm continuing up now. Once that flamed out though, you can see I started to burn off the hydrogen engine and I wanted to get higher up in the air. Now at first I was a little worried that something collided with the main stage, but fortunately all the boosters seemed to hit themselves and everything seemed to turn out okay. Now checking my trajectory here, I noticed just a minor problem. I did end up burning straight up, but unfortunately, I originally was going to need to angle myself a little bit more in front of the bun in order to collide with it. As it is, I'm going to be a little behind it, so I had to use a little more fuel than I wanted to to make sure I was going to be ahead of it. This just meant that this attempt was going to be pretty wasteful, but I figured for a first attempt anyway, it was all right. But with the journey there mostly complete, I entered the sphere of influence, and you can see me now falling into the mud. For some reason, it just ends up disappearing like this a lot. I don't understand stay at this game, but also, there was another major problem. If you take a look at my Delta V right now and the current speed I'm going, I currently have less fuel than the speed that I'm going. This guarantees I will not be slowing down in time, and yeah, that, yeah. Trying again though, this time I actually angled myself pretty well, and you can see here I'm getting a direct collision with the mud. Now I extended on my landing gear that I added on, and you can see after that, I'm starting to do a burn right now to see if I can slow down. Now this time my burn actually wasn't too bad, and you can see now I almost stopped right at the surface. Just waiting a little bit longer though, I was able to touch down here, and the moment my landing gear touched, I instantly started to burn away. Now, as at this point though, I pretty much immediately ran out of fuel, and you can see I switched over to my small stage. I may have forgotten though that I have to land during the day in order to have energy to run the engine, so that didn't go particularly well. But with another attempt here, I wanted to see if I was actually gonna be able to get my first score on the leaderboard. Now falling down here, I was doing another burn now, and you can see I'm trying to stop right at the surface. Unfortunately, I was a little early this time, but I was able to slowly glide down and touching the surface now, I blasted away, and this time with a lot more fuel. Now I knew that my Xenon engine wasn't gonna have that much thrust, so I wanted to make sure I had enough hydrogen fuel to actually escape the mud. Now you can also see here, I'm trying to angle myself towards Kerbin, and I was hoping that was gonna help me actually actually get there. With that bottom stage spent though, you can see now I deployed off the top one and extended out the panels. Now it was at this point though, once I zoomed out, I noticed a problem. You can see here that my periatus around Kerbin is really far away from it and ideally it would actually be an intersection. Now this just means that when I was burning before, I did it really inefficiently and I wanted to try again from an earlier state. The game didn't 
really seem to like this though, so I had to do another reload here earlier on, and you can see now I'm trying again. Now I once again touch the surface of the mun, and you can see me now burning away as fast as possible. Now I could tell I still messed it up, but this time I was a lot closer because my periopsis was only about 2,000 kilometers. So now I just extended out the panels again, and you can see now I'm starting to slowly shave that down. Now fortunately, time was something I had quite a bit of, so I sort of just let this run here, and I wanted to see just how low I could get it. And after waiting a very long time, finally I managed to get it down to a full collision. Once I had this, I was able to burn directly towards Kerbin, and you can see now slowly accelerating towards it. Now, I already wasn't in love with this ion engine, and it's just so slow, and I realized here I still have almost all of my fuel left as I was making it there. Now, I figured there'd be a lot of room for improvement, but at this point, I just wanted to fall down on the ocean and see what my time would be. Now, you might think it's a really bad idea to hit the atmosphere at 4 kilometers per second, but fortunately, they haven't added heating effects into this game yet, so by doing that, it's gonna end up just slowing me down a lot, and overall, it's actually gonna be a pretty big help. You can see just how quickly I managed to shave down my speed and get down to under 200 meters per second. Now, my solar panels are doing a pretty good job as well, acting like a sail, and you can see now, coming through the clouds and finally hitting the ocean. Now, my total mission time for this flight ended up being 2 hours and 45 minutes, but I thought I could do a lot better than that. Now, the obvious thing to change at this point is that return vessel, and you can see now, I ended up completely getting rid of everything on it. I wanted to change this over to being a methylox stage, and the reason I didn't want to go hydrogen is that the engine's actually so big that it really just doesn't make sense. This ant engine, though, is actually surprisingly small, and I figured with that, and stacking out a bunch of these small tanks, I'd still be able to have a pretty light, albeit a lot more powerful return ship. Now, I also wanted to have more speed getting there, so you can see now, I added on even more boosters, and with this, I wanted to give it a full test. Now, going over to the launch pad here, I, I could tell immediately the game wasn't really having a good time, and immediately before I could literally do anything, it said I had failed. Now, originally, I assumed it was a support problem, so I tried adding on these braces, and actually, this did seem to help a little bit. I was able to take off here, but for some reason it started gliding off to the side, and I really don't understand that at all, but at least I was able to eventually go straight up. It also had this weird vibration to it, but I mean, as long as it's producing thrust, I guess I'm happy, but once it finally ran out here, you can see now, I'm trying to launch off that center stage and see what I can do. Now, launching off my hydrogen stage, though, was kind of a problem. One thing I had realized at this point is that I have no reaction wheels, meaning I can't turn myself around at all. To solve that, you can see it had on a small reaction wheel of a top stage here, and that should help out a lot. Back on the launch pad, though, the game still doesn't really like me. I, I don't know what's up with that. So I decided to move over to the runway here, and for some reason, this was working significantly better. After seeing this, I cannot think of a single circumstance where I would rather launch off the launch pad than the runway, because this just went completely flawlessly. This time, I had no weird turn, I had no weird oscillations, and it was going much smoother than before. Now, I also waited a little bit longer this time, and I had a much better angle with the MUN, and you can see now, I'm finally burning off my hydrogen stage. And of course, I warped away from Kerbin, and started to warp in towards the MUN here. And at this point, I was just testing the waters to see at what altitude I would lose all of my speed. Now, after seeing that 38,000 meters where I ended up stopping, I subtracted that off from where I was, and I started my burn there. Ideally, now, I would stop at exactly zero meters, and it was was looking a little scary at first, and I ended up hitting the surface at right around 200 meters per second. Now that seems like a lot, but I was pretty much only off by a couple of seconds, and just by starting to burn slightly earlier, I was hoping to perfectly stop. Now on this attempt here, I was a little bit early, but I was able to glide down to the surface pretty easily here, and as soon as I hit it, you can see once again, I burst it away. And you can see after finishing off that hydrogen stage, I finally broke out the new one. Now unfortunately though, I ended up messing this up pretty badly, and I managed to accidentally have my periopsis be really far away from Kerbin. Now, giving this another test here, I ended up burning in a slightly different direction to hopefully get myself a direct encounter, and this time things were looking a lot better. My periopsis was still pretty big, but I was hoping now I'd be able to get it down relatively easily. And fortunately, without wasting 
too much fuel. I did manage to get that intersection here, and once I saw that, I turned myself to face directly towards Kerbin and just kept accelerating towards it. Now, the thrust of this engine is about 10 times of the other engine, and while I do have a lot less delta V overall, I should be able to get through all of it before I end up hitting the atmosphere. And after only a few minutes here, you can see I finally ran out of fuel, but I did have one more trick up my sleeve. There's one more source of fuel I haven't used yet. That's the Kerbal's jetpack, and you can see now I'm starting to burn towards Kerbin. Now, I don't understand why I'm running towards Kerbin here, but that that's alright. And you can see after quite a while, I just kept increasing my speed slowly, and I managed to get out pretty much another 300 meters per second. Now, I know what you're thinking, sending a lone Kerbal directly into the atmosphere might be a bad idea, but I was hoping if he fell into the ocean, it'd be able to cushion him enough that he wouldn't instantly die. I mean, he might suffer some long-term damage from this, but... It's alright. It's gonna be alright. And you can see now, we're actually not doing too bad coming through the clouds. We're right around 60 meters per second. It was faster than I was hoping, but I figured it'd be alright. And you can see now hitting into the water. While he did go ridiculously deep, he did actually manage to live, and he bounced out perfectly fine. Now, unfortunately, my mission clock got a little messed up when I eviated the Kerbal here, but just by using the universal time when I launched the rocket and when the Kerbal was in the water, you can see I managed to do my entire trip in an hour and 45 five minutes. Now that's not bad at all, and honestly it was a lot faster than I thought we are gonna make it. Now I'm sure there's a lot of ways I could have made this faster, but at some point you just add on too many boosters and the game ends up running at like one frame per second, and that's just not really that productive. But guys, if you have any more records you want to see me try out, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Of course, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, till next time.